Today we had the, the fourth lecture in our series on ODA, 50 years lessons learned and new approaches and today's topic was specifically targeted at in new innovative funding mechanisms. We are really honoured that the executive director of Unit 8, uh, Danny Brew, was with us to explain to us how Unit 8 works. It's really interesting to hear the experience for somebody who actually works in practice, who deals with these situations and who knows what's going on on a political level but also on the level on the ground where the people actually work with it. It's a mechanism to raise new money on top of what is there for overseas development assistance. New money which wasn't there before and Unitaid is financed mostly by innovative financing. One of them is the air ticket levy. This works in nine countries that contribute to Unitaid. Passengers pay one, two, three additional dollars on their ticket and this money goes in part to Unitaid. They don't feel it, most of them don't even know it and it is something that provides money of solidarity. Solidarity between those who are rich enough to pay a plane ticket and those who are too poor to buy their essential medications. We looked also at what are the future mechanisms and the big new issue today is the financial transaction tax. It is called the Robin Hood tax. It means taking money from the big financial transaction, the stock exchange, the banks, etc. Taxing shares transfer at 0.1%. Taxing futures or derivatives at even less than 0.01%. And still that could raise more than 250 billion euros if it was in all the G20 countries. And we also talked about how Unitaid works, because it's not only innovative financing, it's also how is it possible to spend the money in an innovative way. And in, Unitaid does that. Unitaid works to transform the markets of medicines, of diagnostic tests, and make these markets work for the poor. Let me give you an example of why we did that. We started with drugs, to give to children living with HIV. When we started that in 2006, only 10 children were born with HIV in Western Europe, but half a million were born with HIV in Africa. 10 children in Western Europe, it was not big enough a market for the pharmaceutical industry to be interested. Half a million in Africa, but with no money, it was not enough of the market to interest the pharmaceutical industry. It's what we call a market failure. And this is where Unitaid intervened. We got a whole set of generic manufacturers to make these pediatric drugs. And now it costs less than $120 per year to treat a child. It used to cost more than 400 before. And 400,000 children are under treatment. So this is how you can transform markets and make them work for the poor. We talked about a couple of issues, but how uh, additional the money is that is being wasted by these innovative funding. It turns out that, that quite a lot of these funds are actually not innovative at all because they waste little money to start with, but then particularly little additional money. So what they actually do is, you could say, replace development aid instead of adding to it. So adding other organizations and new mechanisms is actually adding also to the cost of it. Now, those are some of the issues that we actually try to discuss uh, and I would say are central to the whole discussion about innovative financing. We had a really inspiring debate with a lot of participants on the challenges of new financial methods for the future.